The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine. P A R K A Y. K margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing in Summerfield. The great Gildersleeve left his home a few minutes ago, headed for PV's pharmacy, so let's drop in and wait for him there. Well, there's the great man's little nephew, Leroy, sitting at the counter polishing off a soda. And daintily perched beside him is that pretty little girl who was visiting in the Bullard home across the street. Leroy with a girl? I just love to have sodas with you, Leroy. (laughs) You're so sweet to buy them for me. (laughs) Mine was simply perfect. Yeah, you make swell sodas, Mr. Peavy. Well, they sound good. (laughs) Gosh, Brenda, you haven't even finished yours. There's half an inch left in the bottom. My mother says it isn't polite to drink sodas way down to the noise. Huh? She says if you haven't had enough, the polite thing to do is to ask for another one. Another one? Two more, Leroy. Oh, gosh, I don't know, Mr. Peavy. Let's see here. If you don't have the cash with you, why don't you charge it? Charge it? In Baltimore, Mother and I have charge accounts all over the town. Yeah? But gee... I'm making the sodas, Leroy. I think I know somebody I can charge them to. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Peavy. (laughs) I'll try to settle with him later. You're making the same kind, aren't you, Mr. Peavy? Oh, yes. Two strawberry agonies coming up. (laughs) Isn't this fun, Leroy? Yeah. I just love coming to the drugstore with you. (laughs) My, my. Well, here you are. Two double strawberry agonies made according to the young lady's prescription. Mm, Just like they make them in Baltimore. Baltimore must be quite a town. Oh, gosh, here comes Uncle Morse. Hurry up, Brenda. We gotta go. Why? Well, I'd rather talk to Uncle about this thing in private. Well, hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, look who's here. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. It, um, aren't you going to introduce me to your little friend? Oh, sure. This is Brenda Knickerbocker, Unc. We were having a sort. I'll talk to you later about things. Let's go, Brenda. Yes. No, wait a minute, Leroy. <laughs> How do you do, Brenda? How do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? You're Mr. Bullard's little niece, aren't you? Yes, I am. From Baltimore. Mother and I are visiting Uncle Rumson. Come on, Brenda. But, Leroy, I haven't finished my soda. Well, you said your mother doesn't think it's polite to finish them. Come on, let's go. Well, we can always come back for another one. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Goodbye. So long, Uncle. Thanks, Mr. Peavy. Call again. Little Leroy. Guess he was embarrassed being with a girl. <laughs> Too bad I didn't get here earlier. I'd like to have bought him that soda. Don't worry, you did. <laughs> what? That's what Leroy was trying to tell you. It seems the young lady wheedled more sodas out of him than he was prepared to pay for. Oh? So I put the last round on your bill. You did? Of course. If that arrangement isn't satisfactory, the pharmacy will be glad oh, to... Oh, no, that's all right, Peavy. Just can't understand why he doesn't have the cash. It was only yesterday I gave him his June allowance. <laughs> I'd better have a talk with that boy. Well, money doesn't last long when you're buying strawberry agonies. Strawberry what? Agonies. Seems to be quite the rage in Baltimore. Tutti Frutti ice cream, chocolate syrup, pistachio ice cream, and strawberry syrup. Mm. You care to have one, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, uh, no thanks, Peavy. 
I'd like to try one out on an adult. No, Peavy. I'm no guinea pig. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I saw him half an hour ago, and he was on his way home from the drugstore. Well, he's on his way back there now. What? Him and that cute little girl from across the street. But where did Leroy get the money? Last time I saw him, he was broke. Yes, sir. Bertie, has Leroy been borrowing money from you? Me? I don't want Leroy borrowing money. I didn't say I'd lend him any money, Mr. Gilsleeve, but if I did, he promised to pay it right back. Uh Uh-huh. Well, he did, Mr. Gilsleeve, right after he pays back Miss Marjorie. Oh, for... Has he been borrowing from Marjorie, too? It costs money when you start buying girls perfume. You know that. Perfume? Not Leroy. Well, you have to spend money if you travel in high society, Mr. Gilsleeve, and little Brenda's high society. Perfume? I don't know what's come over that boy. He's never paid any attention to girls before. <laughs> he had no little cutie like her fan them eyelashes at him before. <laughs> What? She sure is cute. You ought to see her turn it on, Mr. Gilsleeve. I just love to have sodas with you, Leroy. (laughs) What does Leroy say to that? He just (laughs) giggles. Now I know I'm going to have a talk with that boy. I have a feeling he's letting a girl make a fool out of him. Look, here they come now. Well, look at Leroy. Oh, for... What's he walking on his hands for? That's puppy love, Mr. Gilsleeve. Puppy love, huh? wonder if he walked on his hands all the way from the drugstore, six blocks. I better call him in before he cartwheels out of sight. Uh, Leroy! What? Oh, hi, Aunt. Oh, hello, Mr. Gilsleeve. Yeah, hello, Brenda. Doesn't Leroy have a lot of talent? (laughs) (laughs) Leroy, if you have a minute to spare, I'd like a word with you. Sure. Goodbye, Brenda. Goodbye. I, I just loved having that soda with you, Leroy. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> and, and if you'd like to, I'd just love to go to the matinee tomorrow. <laughs> Leroy, will you please come in the house? Okay. Goodbye, Brenda. Goodbye, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, step inside. Sure. I didn't want to be rude, Uncle. Yes, yes. Step into the den, my boy. I want to have a talk with you. Okay. Now then, Leroy, sit down. If it's about those sodas at Mr. Peavy's, I figured I'd pay you back out of my allowance. It isn't just that, my boy. You borrowed from Bertie, you borrowed from Marjorie. You're living beyond your means, Leroy. Yeah, I sure am. Now then, tell your old uncle everything from the very beginning. Just how did this expensive friendship with little Brenda start? Well, the day she and her mother came to visit the Bullards, Mm -hmm. I was showing her how I can stand on my head, and 50 cents rolled out of my pocket. Yes? And the next thing I knew, I was buying her a strawberry agony. That's what I thought. Leroy, she places entirely too much emphasis on money. I'm sure Brenda is a very nice little girl, but she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She probably doesn't realize that you can't afford these things. So why don't you take it easy, my boy? But gosh, Unc, I like to be with her. Leroy, what's gotten into you? (laughs) You always avoided girls like poison ivy. Yeah, but Brenda's different. Different? In what way? Well, she says such nice things to a guy. Oh? What does she say? Oh, you'd think it was silly. Now, my boy, your old uncle understands these things. Uh, what does she say? Well, she says I look like... <laughs> like who? Like Gregory Peck. <laughs> Gregory Peck? Leroy, believe me, you don't look like Gregory Peck. I know, he's taller. Oh, <laughs> Leroy, that little girl is just using flattery to get things out of you. But, uh... It's an old trick, and you've got to learn to recognize it. Now, let's break it up before she breaks you. And me, too. 
I want you to promise me you'll stop throwing your money away. Okay, Uncle. You and the little girl can play together all you want, but stop buying her perfume and things. Okay. Uncle. What? What'll I do with this pound box of candy? Uh, Leroy, you haven't been buying candy, too. Well, she said she just loves candy. Sodas, movies, perfume. Give me that box of candy. I'm going over to Bullard's and have a talk with her mother about this. It's time they found out my nephew's no Ali Khan. Rumson? Yes, Ellen? Do you mind driving Brenda downtown? She wants a new dress for tomorrow afternoon. She's going to the movies with Leroy. She has to have a new dress to go see Hopalong Cassidy? <laughs> My dear sister, don't you know you're spoiling that child? Oh, Rumson Bullard. She's just like you. She gets everything she wants. Don't be silly. There are lots of things I haven't got. For instance, I don't even have a date for your party at the country club tomorrow night. That shouldn't happen to, to an attractive widow. Oh, now, Ellen, really. Surely there must be some dark and handsome, eligible bachelor around here. Believe me, there's nobody in this neighborhood who fits that description. What about Leroy's uncle across the street? Ellen... I hate to sound uncharitable, but I will not have a bullet of Baltimore escorted by that blustering water buffalo. <laughs> he looks like he has possibilities to me. Oh, Ellen, please. Oh, <laughs> I suppose I do sound like a desperate woman, but I, I just dare anything resembling a knight in shining armor to glance my way. Oh, excuse me, I'll answer the door. Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Uh, I came over to speak to Mrs. Knickerbocker about a personal matter. Oh, no. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, come in, Gildersleeve. Thank you. Uh, she's in the living room. Our living room is this way. It is? Oh, yes. Uh, Ellen, uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve, my sister, Mrs. Knickerbocker. Well, well, how do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? How do you do, Mrs. Knickerbocker? We were just talking about you. You were? Uh -huh. Yes, we were. I was just telling Ellen what an, an unusual neighbor you are. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Knickerbocker, I came over to have a chat with you about Leroy and little Brenda. Oh, oh, Brenda and Leroy. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I can go now. But, Ellen... Yes, Rumson? Don't mistake blue serge for shining armor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. What do you mean by that? Oh, oh um, private joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Knickerbocker, what I came over to talk to you about... Oh, yes, little Brenda and Leroy. Isn't it wonderful they get along so well together? I consider her most fortunate to have Leroy for a playmate while she's here. He's... He's such a perfect little gentleman. He is? Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> of course, after meeting his uncle, well, it's easy to see where he gets such sterling qualities. Uh, thank you. <laughs> a friendship like this is very valuable for Brenda. Well, it's expensive for Leroy, too. I mean, valuable. <laughs> yeah. What I mean to say is, I know little Brenda doesn't mean any harm, but she flatters Leroy quite a bit. Oh? Yes. Yeah. For instance... <laughs> She tells him he looks like Gregory Peck. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I don't consider that flattering. After seeing his uncle. Huh? <laughs> well, you're both dark and rugged and handsome features. Well, he's taller than I am. <laughs> mm, well, he, he, he gives one that impression. Well, that's the movies for you. Trick shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd be a lot of fun. Oh, I hope I see you at the country club tomorrow night. Country club? Well, I hadn't planned on being there. Why not? Well, as a matter of fact, I've been such a busy public official, I haven't gotten around to joining the country club yet. Oh, but Mr. Gildersleeve, you must come. The party won't be a success without you. Well, thank you. And you don't have to be a member to go tomorrow night. But I understood that that's a big benefit dinner. All the seats are probably taken in advance. Mm, the seat next to me isn't taken. What's the matter? Is it broken? <laughs> Oh, silly. How frank do I have to be? I haven't an escort. You haven't? Say, I just got a great idea. 
I don't want you to think I'm pushy, but why don't I escort you to that party? Uh, I'd just love to go with you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, a great idea I had. Uh, shall we say uh, seven-ish? Whatever you say. Uh, seven-ish, then. We don't want to be late for dinner. Goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Oh, nearly forgot. Here's a box of candy I brought over. Oh, for me? Uh, uh, jelly beans. Jelly beans? Oh, I mean, it's for you to give to Brenda from Little Leroy. Oh. <laughs> like you say, a grand little friendship they have. <laughs> Goodbye, jelly beans at Leroy. <laughs> I guess everybody who's tried it agrees about parquet margarine. That's right, Mr. Wall. Yep. I guess that we all agree that parquet is the margarine with a delicate luxury flavor that costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. You say it that way if you want to, Mr. Wall. You got a constitutional right to say it any way you want. Well, Bertie, that's... Me? I say parquet tastes real good. It tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, parquet margarine ought to taste that good. It's prepared like a rare luxury food. Only selected products of American farms are used in making it. That's why parquet is so nutritious. And that's why it has such a light, sweet flavor, whether you use it on hot mashed potatoes or spread it on your Sunday biscuits. Yes, sir, you got a constitutional right to say it that way if you want to. Don't you see, Bertie? That's the way... Parquet tastes so good. That's my way of saying it. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, friends, there's one thing that Bertie and I do agree on. And I think there's only one way to say it. We'd both like you to try parquet. You're getting better all the time, Mr. Wall. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, the wealthy mother and daughter visiting the Bullards are causing quite a commotion in the Gildersleeve home. The great man didn't think Leroy could afford so many soda fountain dates with the daughter, so he went over to complain and came back with a country club date with her mother. <laughs> and this morning, it's duly recorded in the Summerfield Indicator. Listen to this, Auntie. Society is agog over the dinner party tonight at the country club. Marjorie, I read that. I have. Read it to me, Marge. Leroy H. approves. Okay. I think you should hear about your uncle's plunge into society, Leroy. Huh? Marjorie? Prominent visiting socialite, Mrs. Ellen Bullard Knickerbocker of Baltimore and Palm Beach. Hey, that's Brenda's mother. Will be escorted by Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. That's your uncle, Leroy, of Summerfield in the water department. How do you like that? All right, Marjorie, that'll be enough. Hey, Uncle, how come you're taking Brenda's mother to the country club when you won't even let no, me... No, Leroy, I've had time to think it over, and I've uh, changed my mind about the Knickerbockers. Yeah? Uh, uh, <clears throat> By the way, here's a dollar. Gosh, thanks. What's it for? Well, you wanted to take little Brenda to the movies this afternoon, didn't you? I'm not the kind of an uncle who objects to a boy spending a little money on movies and sodas. What a character. <laughs> Don't take too much hair off the top, Floyd, and leave the sideburns long like Gregory Peck. Okay, Commish. I see by the society column you're breaking bread with the country club set tonight. Well, I am going out there for dinner, if that's what you mean. Escorting Mrs. Ellen Bullard Knickerbocker of Baltimore, I see. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, I've been giving this splurge of yours a little thought, Commish. How about letting me chauffeur you out there? Floyd, I don't think I need a chauffeur to drive my car. Commish, you mean you're taking your Baltimore Oreo to the country club in a 1937 touring car? 36. <laughs> How are you going to feel when you rattle up to the front portico behind all them Cadillacs and turn your keys over to a sneering attendant? Now, Floyd... Worse than that, how's the rich Mrs. Knickerbocker of Baltimore going to feel? Well, I hadn't thought of that. Well, start thinking, Commish. Gee, when you take a classy dame like her to the country club, you got to go in style. 
Well? You're the city water commissioner stepping out. You're an important man. Well, yes, I am. Of course, your little pal, Floydie Munson, could get you out of this awkward situation. Hmm? Huh? What do you have in mind? You know my brother Al that runs the used car lot? No. Him. Well, he just got in a 49 model half a block long. And I think if I slipped him ten bucks from you, he'd let us use it tonight. Well, I don't know, Floyd. Uh, okay, just an idea. But if you'd rather be ostrich-sized... Yep. <laughs> well, it might be worth ten dollars at that. Sure. It won't be putting you out too much, will it, Floyd? No, anything for a pal. Excuse me a minute, Commish, while I go out back and make a phone call. Yeah, all right. Yeah, da 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 Hello, Al. He went for it. Ten bucks. Don't forget, I get half for driving. Gildersleeve, you look pretty handsome in your tux. Getting a little tight, though. I think that cleaner's been shrinking it. I know I haven't put on any weight. Better take this loose change to tip the boys around the club. Yes, sir? Evening clothes certainly make a man feel important. Anki, why, you look positively dreamy. Yeah, thank you, Marjorie. I don't imagine those Baltimore boys have much on me. Oh, Mrs. Knickerbocker called while you were shaving. She did? Yeah, she just wanted you to know what color dress she's wearing. Well, that's strange. I'll see it when I pick her up. <laughs> Anki, she wanted you to know so you could send the proper corsage. Oh, yes, corsage. I almost forgot about that. Thank you, my dear. I'll stop by the florist and get something. She's wearing black, so she gave me a little hint. Oh? White orchids. White orchids. Oh, that's fine. I'll get a nice bunch of those. Oh, <laughs> She'll love that. They're only $10 a piece. Oop. Well, I'll get one and be sure it's in full bloom. <laughs> Uh-oh, that must be Floyd. By George, the horn alone is worth $10. Isn't the evening delicious? Delightful, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, indeed. Delightful. It reminds me so much of those early spring evenings motoring along the French Riviera. The French, uh, well, a little. Uh, this is a lovely automobile you have, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you. Nice horn, too. It, Munson, the horn. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Will that be all, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, uh, that's all I can think of right now, Munson. <laughs> oh, you might turn on the radio. Okay, Commissioner... I mean, Commissioner Gildersleeve. We have a loudspeaker in the back seat here, Mrs. Knickerbocker. Oh, but this must be quite an expensive car. Oh, yeah, $10 a night. I mean... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the music. Oh, isn't that a lovely song? Lovely. La, 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 la. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're a baritone. I just love baritone. Oh, you do? Oh. I've got my love to keep me warm. Beautiful, go on. I can't remember the worst December. Just watch those icicles fall. Splendid. What do I care if icicles fall? I got my love. I've got my love to, to keep me warm. Munson, Munson, please. Floyd, pay attention to your drive. For heaven's sake. <laughs> May I have the waiter bring you another demi tassie, Mrs. Knickerbocker? No, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, it's been quite an evening, hasn't it, Mr. Bullard? Hasn't it? <laughs> I'll bet you were surprised when you heard I was escorting your sister, weren't you? Frankly, Gildersleeve, I was. And I think my water commissioner is the most attractive escort here. Well, thank you. I'm going to have to come out here more often. After all, the country club, 
uses a lot of our water. <laughs> oh, well, hasn't it been fun? Yeah, it certainly has. Certainly been fun for me. Wonderful dinner. Mr. Bullard, who pays for all this? Oh, oh, I'm glad you reminded me, Gildersleeve. It's time I made an announcement. Huh? Uh, uh, members of the Summerfield Country Club and distinguished guests. <laughs> That's us. We hope you enjoyed your dinner. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> That's why we waited until now to tell you how much it's going to cost you. What's this? The dinner is $10 a plate. Oop. That's $20. That makes $40 i have spent. The proceeds tonight will be used for a very worthwhile project. This affair is sort of a benefit, you know, so we don't mind giving a little, do we? <laughs> this keeps up, they'll have to throw a benefit for me. Oh, well, I won't have to spend any more. Uh, uh, quiet, please. Now, we only need about $200 more. I knew I was giving Leroy good advice. Why didn't I take it? So, uh... <laughs> uh would, would someone present who really enjoyed his dinner care to start the ball rolling? I think he's looking at you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, he is? Oh, why don't you start things off? Well, I'm in this bar. Uh, Mr. Bullard. Yes? I'd like to contribute five dollars. Oh. Oh. Wonderful. I just love a generous man, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ooh, what the heck? Make it ten. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, members of the country club, I think you'll agree that this is a most generous gesture on the part of our city water commissioner. <laughs> Since the club will be using this money to drill a well and install our own private water system. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. You'll know when you try it. Just one bite of crisp toast topped with parquet, and you'll know that this margarine is prepared like a rare luxury food. Because parquet margarine tastes like a luxury. Parquet is nourishing and economical, too. Though it costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads, it gives you every bit of their nourishment. And every pound is fortified with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Tomorrow, get Parquet. You'll love its light luxury flavor on everything from breadsticks to Johnny Cakes. You'll find it tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Ladies and gentlemen, besides the members of our regular cast, we had two charming newcomers to Summerfield tonight, Mrs. Knickerbocker of Baltimore... He was played by the lovely star of the new RKO movie, The Story of Sam Wilson, Miss Martha Scott. Thank you, Hal. Being in Summerfield tonight with you has been a lot of fun. Well, thank you, Martha. Come to see us again. Say hello to Sam Wilson, too. <laughs> and here's our other charming miss and the star of radio's junior miss, Miss Barbara Whiting. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I just love being Leroy's girlfriend. <laughs> well, I'm sure he enjoyed it, too. Didn't you, Leroy? <laughs> oh, for good night. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Eason. This is John Wall saying goodnight to the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a real bargain. An all-aluminum silent butler, a dollar and a half retail value, and it's yours for only 50 cents and a Pabstet label. This silent butler is handsome enough for a gift, and it's big. Has a deep, generous size bowl, a long handle, a hinged top that opens at your touch. It's just the thing for collecting cigarette ashes or crumbing your table. Now today, just get either regular Pabstet or the new Pabstet two-pound economy loaf. Your dealer will give you full details about getting this beautiful aluminum silent butler valued at one dollar and a half for only 50 cents. Uh, hi, Arch. Uh, what you doing? 
Oh, look, Benny, I'm just about to make an announcement that Duffy's Tavern uh, follows immediately. Uh, I know. It follows immediately on Nibbuk. Nibbuk? Finnegan, what is this Nibbuk?